Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with another Legendary Difficulty quest battle today. We go in, by request, as Ungrim Iron Fist for the Axe of Dargo. As before, we're playing this with the preset armies from the quest battle menu. This is a very tough battle, making the victory all the more satisfying. There. There across the way. The Discordance. For the Axe of Dargo to sing again. For the runes to glow bright with power once more. We must destroy the foe before us. The chaos filth that dare cross our mountains. We do this in the name of Grimnir. For it will be a joy to spill the blood of Northmen. The enemy lord is a taint upon the world. Yet in fighting him, I shall make a thing of wondrous beauty. A perfect song of weaponcraft, in whose rhythm the acts of my ancestor shall find harmony and you. Slayers, I hear your howls of longing, desperate to be about this, to plunge your axes into the chaos scum before us. So, go, bring me victory, bring me death. All right, first things first, we're going to talk about my deployment. Now, you'll notice the uh, the gyrocopters here are uh, up front, so they're actually going to be sent up nice and early for some early harassment. That's uh, really important. It really helps the battle as it goes on. Meanwhile, this clump here, you will notice I have boxed up, and I've actually deployed to the furthest corner that, uh, that the deployment zone will allow me to do. And as soon as possible, I push further to get into the corner. Yes, it is, I guess, corner camping, but I want to have as few spots that need defending as possible. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create uh, an area where the enemy just cannot penetrate, basically. I've got my, uh, my long beards with great weapons over here, and I've got my long beards over here as well. And what happens, or what the plan is, that if any of the cavalry comes charging through, these are actually deployed deep enough that they'll get caught in and won't be able to interact with or intercept or interrupt, rather, my ranged units. Meanwhile, I've got the Iron Breakers back here because they've got their, uh, you know, charges, of course, that they can throw on anything that comes in this way. And on this side, I've got my Iron Drakes because they've got fire as well, of course, and they can throw fire anywhere that comes in on this side. So I've got a decent amount of coverage. And if a cavalry charge comes in this way, I've got this extra layer of defense on both sides because I want to make sure that my artillery is safe at all times. So I've got sort of a double layer over here with the range units because they can fight if they need to and I've got a double layer over here as well with the iron breakers and the slayers now I'm pushing everyone over as quickly as possible or right away I send them over to this side and the reason why I do that is because I'll be able to defend this little hill over here and with the organ guns up here they'll actually have a clear shot over the heads of all the dowie so that is why i pick this spot as opposed to the spot over there or anything elsewhere just because i'll have more angles of attack meanwhile the flame cannons themselves can be right up against the front lines because they're actually able to uh, fire in a great arc so that's the idea behind the positioning here meanwhile let's take a look at these gyrocopters i have sent them forward and it's all a matter of picking your early targets let's just speed it up a little bit and you'll notice that these are regular gyrocopters they're not with brimstone guns they're not anti-large um they're not bombers so i want to make sure i hit infantry because they are anti-infantry now you might consider focusing on the high tier infantry units but because these gyrocopters aren't armor piercing you'd have very little damage against the Chaos Warriors with great weapons or Chaos Warriors in general at all. So instead, I focus on the Chaos Marauders. And what I do is I take a few shots from the front before realigning, going behind, and getting some shots from the rear. I also spread the Gyrocopters out a little bit so that the damage is actually spread up and down the lines as opposed to focused on one pocket because obviously hit points count across the unit as individuals. And you'll notice I swapped targets there, now I'm focused on being, focusing on these guys. And really the thought is, I want to spread some damage before the lines meet. Because if I'm able to spread damage, then some of these units will break almost immediately 
uh, if not instantly, and that'll help just reduce morale overall. As soon as friends start routing, as we know, that does cause uh, chain routes and whatnot, so I'm trying to set myself up for that. I'm spreading the damage because if any one of these units go up against any one of mine, especially in this state, it'll be quick work. They won't last a very long time. So notice again, now I'm focusing on these marauders here as well, basically just firing on them until they route for the first time, because again, remember, there's a limit to how many times a unit will route before they shatter. So I've, you know, I've got one route activated, I believe, for each of these units, and I keep just sort of slowly nudging forward, causing some damage as I keep pushing. And you'll notice that over here, this cavalry is pretty hesitant about going over this hill. Now, I can't actually fire until they get over this hill. If I try to fire as they're over the cusp of the hill, I won't actually be able to hit them. The, the bullets will actually hit the hill itself. So that is also a reason why I've kept the range appropriate, where if they were any closer, I wouldn't be able to hit anyway, so I've just kept them as far back as possible. It's important to keep that in mind. Now, of course, enemy reinforcements do come in as well, so that's why I'm ready for the cavalry charges coming in from this side, ready for cavalry charges coming in from the front. They really, if they penetrate, they can cause a lot of damage, and that's what you have to be really careful about. Now, when they finally start coming over this hill here, again, target selection is essential. Um, of these two units, the Marauder Horsemen obviously are without any armor, but the Chaos Knights are heavily armored. Your organ guns are armor piercing with their missiles. So what you want to do is you want to focus on the Chaos Knights with the organ guns, and with your Quarrelers, you want to focus on the Marauder Horsemen. And look just how quickly the Marauder Horsemen completely give up on the fight. Ranged units are extremely helpful in that regard. They surrender, they're right by the edge of the map, so they leave right away. Organ guns and the uh, flame cannon continue to fire, and now the Quarrelers are able to open fire on the Chaos Knights as well. And before long, these guys are ready to give up as well. So, just some quick work done here. Meanwhile, over here again, I'm not taking any bait. I'm not going out to engage. I rotate my flame cannon to fire here instead, now that these guys are mostly taken care of. And again, I'm focusing on the armored unit because of these explosions that can cause some damage. I'm focusing on the more dangerous unit. Now keep in mind, missile fire is very good for breaking morale. So I do want to take care of the missile cavalry as quickly as possible. And I feel like that was one volley from all the quarrelers and these guys are done. They're taken care of, they're on their way out. Flame cannon continues to fire. I'm rotating the organ guns as well to try and focus down and get these Chaos Knights taken care of. I really don't want them to hit my lines and you'll notice an unfortunate mistake here. I keep the flame cannon firing. I should have called it to stop and it actually hits one of my units square in the center. Fortunately, the knights were charging these guys instead, so they aren't able to penetrate through. I'm able to push the slayers in as well. Again, uh, unit targeting very important, and you'll notice over here, the chariot also unable to penetrate this line. I'm able to send Ungrim himself in to take care of Krom Plagueis here. So again, the line is able to hold. Meanwhile, the knights surrender, or they're beginning to run away uh, to get another cycle in, and I don't chase. I believe everyone is on guard mode so that they maintain their shape, but I want to make sure I do not break this shape. Meanwhile, the gyrocopters are running out of ammo slowly, but I do keep the chase on. I want to see how lines form up before I send them in to drop their bombs, and that's why they're kind of laying back there. And again, over here, just focusing now on these Chaos Warriors with great weapons that are ranked up to 3 gold, because again, they are the more threatening force uh, compared to these guys who are not ranked up. So again, just being selective with my armor or with my... Uh, Target picking, the organ guns are also firing into these heavily armored, extremely dangerous units. Meanwhile, the quarrelers here are now firing on these Chaos Marauders with great weapons because I feel like these guys are largely taken care of. So really, cycling through my targets, trying to hurt everyone equally, so to speak, before lines even meet. You'll notice very quickly this Chaos Spawn has been taken care of. The uh, Slayers were actually sent in to take care of the Chariots, and the Chariots now come in for a second cycle charge on this unit over here instead, so I'm actually able to send the Slayers there once they're taking care, done taking care of the Chaos Knights, sorry. So, again, just sort of moving back and forth, you'll notice a lot of these units have started giving up. Now, I was a little careless over here. I allowed my uh, Gyrocopters to get a couple of hits from these Chaos uh, Marauder Horsemen, which is bad. They didn't actually destroy any of my units, which is fortunate, but uh, you have to be careful about that because if you lose actual gyrocopters, you lose their bombs. And their bombs, as you can see, become very helpful, especially when these lines start to clump up. So again, massive amounts of morale damage that's technically being fired on by artillery, uh, lots of damage being done as well, so it just helps break these units. And of course, explosions don't discriminate, so you do have to be careful with your targeting. Now again, everyone is just sort of 
holding these lines and I finally decide to send my long beards with great weapons forward a little bit because they were being uh, left unengaged, which is sort of pointless. So I do send them forward and I try to get them into engagements as well, try to get some surrounds going, bait these marauders out here and engage them, get a surround on these chaos warriors as well. So again, just sort of trying to spread the love, if you will. And I'm also trying to make sure that uh, Ungrim stays on Prom Plages. And I believe I've already popped the health potion that Ungrim has just to keep him alive. Because it is a dangerous situation for him to be in. And the Slayer's obviously making quick work of the Chaos Knights and the Chaos uh, Chariot. Making sure that they're not as effective on their return charges. And you'll notice most of my units haven't really been engaged. Um, Chaos really comes in to attack in this corner. I haven't been breaking my lines because the moment I break my lines, I give Chaos an avenue to enter into the rear and to stop all the fire coming in from my range units. That includes artillery as well. And once that happens, that's a huge support structure that has been completely removed. And you'll notice again, I don't chase these guys out. I, I sort of stay focused on the current situation because they still have units like the Chariot available for charging in. So. You have to be very patient here. Now, ultimately, Krom does come back in, and I send Ungrim in to deal with that as well. You know, just uh, as soon as he pops into these Iron Breakers, I bring Ungrim in, try to kill Krom, because again, the morale damage is extremely helpful at this point. And you'll notice I've actually sent the Gyrocopters in to help this combat scenario here, because again, um, I want to make quick work of everything. At this point, the bombs have been depleted, I believe, so I don't really mind losing some of these actual bomber units. Krom falls, as you can see, still firing in on these guys with all my firepower, trying to get them to break. Again, the triple gold is the frightening unit, so you want to focus down on the ones that can cause the most damage. And you'll actually notice most of these Chaos Knights have stayed behind. Now, I'm not sure if I would have done worse if they came in along with everybody else because I feel like at this point my organ gunners for example they're just firing on units that are already on their way out could have really you know done without that if they were able to fire on these chaos knights instead for example uh, it would have been a better use of their ammunition so in fact pretty soon I actually stop I, I seize fire and I send these gyro bombers or gyrocopters sorry to chase these units out because I don't want them returning once I'm engaging these chaos knights I want to be able to focus on one direction I want to be able to form up and fight against a straight line of Chaos Knights because getting flanked at that point uh, would be very unfortunate because again now my uh, range units are all relatively low on ammo I don't necessarily have enough units to create a blockade to prevent Chaos from you know intercepting or, or again interrupting any fire so you'll notice now I'm actually trying to form up here I'm creating this little cup if you will hoping that the Chaos Knights will all charge in here and I'll be able to fold in, or they'll all charge in here and I'll be able to fold in. And again, I'm trying to spread my range units out as well, because I want to be able to fire across and straight ahead just to provide support wherever necessary. Now, the artillery, again, I'm trying to keep them at a height. I want to make sure they're able to fire over the heads of my units, and you'll see they do quite a bit of damage early on. A few Chaos Knights dropping right there, a couple more shots will do a lot of work, and again, because the artillery is so slow, it's essential to give the move orders instantly. You need to be very fast, and you need to make sure that you're not sending yourself too far. As soon as these units got into range, I opened fire as opposed to letting them continue the move order. Now you'll notice these lines do collide very quickly, but um, they're not they're barely able to penetrate. Again, I've got the second layer here just to hold the line, and over here as well, able to hold the line against these cavalry charges, because again, uh, charge defense against large. Now you'll notice uh, the artillery wasn't able to do as much work this time around, but I need to keep an eye out on any time these cycles go out, because the moment they do that, they are ripe for picking. Otherwise, I'll be cross-firing, possibly causing damage to my own units. You'll see I do try that a little bit here. Of course, they are large, so I am able to get a couple of clean shots in, but you have to be careful. Um, of course, with the fire as well, I'm able to get a lot of damage done. And of course, the flame cannons as well. You have to be extra careful with flame cannons. So I try to keep targeting units that are far away from any of mine, especially at this point where all of my units are pretty low on unit count. Uh, it could instantly break and shatter my entire army. One incorrect um, sort of shot from that flame cannon. But you'll notice a lot of these units are very quickly starting to take a lot of damage. Off to the corner here, I'm not able to provide much support. I just have this one unit of Corollers, but again, they aren't armor piercing or anything, so they're not causing a lot of damage. So I'm just trying to focus on this side first, get these units taken care of as quickly as possible so then I can collapse in. Again, just being able to focus every once in a while on a, uh, on a particular threat helps in the long run. 
Now this might be very scary because I am losing this flank, but I'm allowing myself to lose this flank so that I can win this one with some certainty. Now again, a couple of stray shots from the flame cannon causing some damage to my own units over here, but you'll notice I've got both of these Chaos Knights on the route now. So again, these guys were able to hold on. I was sort of knew going in that this would be my weaker flank on the right here because I had thinner units, I didn't have as much range support, but as these guys are trying to come in for uh, for support, I'm able to open fire with all sorts of equipment, all sorts of range units, and that just continues to keep them broken. And these gyrocopters, again, just chasing these Chaos Knights, ensuring they shatter these late shots from the organ guns from the rear, causing that extra bit of damage, causing a shatter here, another shatter here. This flank actually does not break, despite my initial fears. And there you have it. All of Chaos is completely shattered. They're on their way out. And I have kept Ungrim alive. Got a lot of deaths, a lot of kills in there, close victory ultimately, and really this battle showcases the value of well-placed and well-used ranged units, and you can see that in the numbers here. Now, artillery, arrows, and fire, they really won the day here, with the wall of Dawi providing safety for said units. Know who to target and with which weapons, and your opponent can be cut down to size before lines meet. And that's what being a great general is about. For more Total War content, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and as always, I'm taking requests for the next quest battle I tackle. I intend to finish them all over time, but you control the order. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you soon on our next battlefield.